All right, so Q1 annual be it's a kaka ka 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 it's October 25th, 2022, uh, Meta Gamera style. Today's temperature in Pacific California is 51. Fahrenheit was low, 61 is the high. So <clears throat> what are we pretending not to know here today? Um, I just want to talk about, I think a lot of people are, are thinking about, um, can my Medaka survive the winter's outdoors right so for people that are keeping them in their ponds or their tubs whatnot bigger the better right bigger the better yeah size matters in this case um so for midakas they stop growing when the average temperature all right because again the average temperature is below 50 fahrenheit that's 10 degrees celsius so what you want to do is you want to look at the you want to look at last year's statistics um, of your general area and kind of look at the weather report right to see when your average temperature started hitting the 51 51 50 van halen style like 51 50 49 you just want to make sure that you know when that uh when that season is going to come for Pacifica, um, I looked at last year and the first week of December, that's when we started seeing the average temperature being or hitting the 50, um, 50 ish, right? 52, 50. So I think our goal, um, right now is to try to get these little, little guys, uh, little fries that you guys are, um, spawning this year to grow to a certain size so this is just based on my experience and again there's a lot of factors involved but um, we're going to talk in inches right so I'm going to bring a ruler I go by centimeters right so the top is centimeter the bottom is inches so what size do you want to try to get your little Oh, they're so awesome. The little, little, it won't focus. The Chiyo and the Yogos to grow. You want them to become, um, the minimum of two thirds of a, of an inch. The inch is the bottom, right? You want at least two thirds of an inch, so that's one, two. Ideally, three fourths. Three fourths is right there. So, once you grow, once you are able to grow them to that size, um, they should make it through the winter times, right? They're big enough, they're robust enough, their body is developed enough. But anything that's under that that size, two thirds being the minimum, two thirds of an inch being the minimum length, there is a high chance, there's probably like 30% of them will survive. So 70% may not make it through the winter um, season. And again, it really depends on where you are, right? Regionally, a lot of places, the top freezes over. A lot of places like the Bay Area, we don't, the water's never gonna freeze, all right? So in general, um, that's the barometer that I look at, right, again. So you look to see when your local region is gonna hit the average of 50 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 10 degrees Celsius for people in Europe and Japan. Well, before then, you wanna to try to get these guys as big as possible. The goal, the size that you want them to be is at least two thirds of an inch minimum, but if try to get them to like three fourths of an inch, there's a greater, greater chance that they're gonna make it through the winter times. But it's okay, you know, the, the weak ones will not make it even if they are at that size, but you don't want the weak ones to produce anyways, right, next season. Um, let me just see. So this is a tub that I've been working on working on is it's one line right here um so I, I moved them from our smaller container 
I put them in here uh, probably like a month ago. And I think Barry and Miracle is asking me like, what are these tubs? So these tubs are these guys right here. It, it's the um, Rubbermaid Brute uh, that you could get at, uh, I got them at, uh, where did I get those? Lowell's, right? It's about $23, the white ones are 23, the gray ones are 24. The reason why I have the, these Yozakuras in the white is because they have lame. Um, the white brings up the lame. Um, so I chose, that's why they're in this white tub. So there are probably, I think this tub is 18 gallons, but with the water level being here, there's at least 14, 15, 16 gallons of water in here. Um, so that's, uh, the other important part is you don't want to overstock these things during the winter, right? Um, I'll go onto that topic on a different, um, video. Cause today I'm just trying to talk about the, uh, temperature stuff, right? Like, so here, uh, real quick. By the way, I like using the white con white containers here because it tells me if the green water is at a optimal condition. Oh, this is like green tea, right? It's not dark, it's not murky, it's green. So there's a lot of a uh, Let me try to get a little bit more. Ooh. Hey, I wanted you in there. Come here. Come back. All right. Got him back. There's a lot of microorganisms that live in green water. And as the temperature drops, the medalcas do, do not bite onto food, per se. So by having this green water, let me try to get a little bit more of the water out. You have all these microorganisms in this water where they're able to get the nutrients through their gills um, as well. All right. So these guys are pretty much born around the same time, but you could tell that some are bigger, some are not. Some are starting to color up. All right. Just trying to get an idea of the size. Um... Okay, I think that's good. So, the white I like because I could see the condition of the water. This green is healthy. You don't want brown green water. Brown green water is when a lot of the uh, microorganisms, they just die. And when they die, they typically turn the water green, um, brownish green, and not green like this. You don't want it much a green, which is really dark green, because it's 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 murky, right? So you want this light uh, green tea color. It's not brown. So let me see. So this right here is about 1.5 centimeters. 1.5 centimeters is about two thirds of an inch. So if you could gauge the size of these guys. So I think in Pacifica, since the average temperature is not gonna to drop to 50 until the first week of December, we still have about a month to go to try to fatten these guys up, right? So again, right now is a good time to kind of like um, observe your fish to see which ones need to, if, if you are planning to keep them outdoors during the winter, trying to see which ones you need to fatten up and which ones are okay. Certain tiny ones, I'll monitor. Um, this year, I don't know what I'm going to do with the tiny, tiny ones. I've brought some indoors um, in the past. Um, but I've left some outdoors and they did fine. So the variable part that I was talking to you, you all about earlier was um, I just don't know with these guys because these are my first F1s, right? The first generations out of the 
the eggs that I got from overseas. Um, and why is that important? It's because I don't know. I don't know where the parents were are from. I mean, were they parents that grew up indoors in a in an aquarium, which is all controlled climate, uh, where they've never experienced the cold, where they have never experienced the differentiation in temperature, right? Condensa. Condensa is like in the morning. Like today, it was like 51. During the day, it was like 60 plus. Um, so the parents, if you if you get eggs from parents that have never experienced that, that shift in temperature, like if you have them indoors, even without a heater, I mean, the temperature indoors doesn't really change, right? Um, they'll lay eggs and the DNA, right? They're not used to the temperature fluctuations. Or did they come from parents that were raised outdoors where they spawned and the eggs are collected and which the eggs were shipped to us in the United States, per se. So I think the, the whole egg thing, the Medaka thing, uh, Medaka world in the United States, I think the earliest I saw it was uh, August or September of 2021. Um, was it 21? Yes. 2021 was when we started seeing eggs being available from Japan, overseas Japan, right? Um, but again, um, I think a lot of people right now who who are experiencing this, like they just don't know where the parents are from or, you know, are they from indoors or outdoors? So again, these guys are um, the first generation from the parents that I got from the eggs and we'll see how they do outdoors. So if they're, I, I just don't know if they're weak, if they're strong, if they're able to to take the temperature fluctuations. For now, like recently, the temperature really started dropping, right? Like in the Bay Area, San Francisco, I think it was always like in the high 50s, but now we're seeing the, you know, it's dropped to like 49 a couple days ago. And some of my adults, some as in like, about two of them didn't make it. Um, they, they they were never experienced. They were born in uh, spring of this year. After I got them as eggs, they they're brought up, um, and uh, they they never they couldn't take the fluctuation. I th I think it's more the temperature fluctuation, day and night. Uh, so for these guys being the first generation little babies, um, I don't know how their genes are. Are they are they strong enough? Are they weak? But we'll see. Um, but that's part of it, right? Part of understanding what you have um, in your tubs or your aquarium. Seeing how they adapt. Are they a strong gene or are they weak? If they're weak, then... You got to try to make them stronger. Um, I think a lot of people try to to create an environment that is best suited for the species or their particular line. But I think as Aquarius, I think the easiest thing to do is try to get them to adapt to us, our lifestyle. Um, I mean, you could you could look at a textbook, and the textbook or online would say, "Well, you should feed them every two hours what they could consume in sixty seconds or one hundred twenty seconds." Right? That's impossible if you if, because you're at work. You know, a lot of people at work. That's impossible. So now, what do you do? You try to develop a line that is catered to your lifestyle. Um, so a lot of people could only feed them once a day. And a lot of people, they don't have time to go through, look through these uh, little uh, chios, yogyos, and say, okay, these guys, like this guy is going to stay, right? They'll probably make it. They'll make it. Come on. They'll make it. But this little guy right here. He has a month to get to at least two thirds of an inch. So he has a chance of surviving, right, outdoors. 
If he doesn't, or she doesn't, can't sex them yet, they're so small, what do you do? Are you going to bring them indoors? Or are you just going to leave them out to see how they do? It may turn out that they have really like strong genes that they'll survive during the cold seasons outdoors, but you just don't know. But So, um, for me personally, I'm going to have like a couple batches. I'm going to leave some outside. I'm going to bring some in, indoors um, and try to see what happens uh, during the spring next year where it's like, oh, did they survive? Did they not? They, did they not survive? If they don't survive, it's okay. They'll just melt away um, in the tub per se um, because at the end of the day you want a strong line right you want strong lineage and that's the goal aside from the looks and all that um, number one is I would say there's two on the top it's like confirmation shape you don't want any bent backs uh, deformities um, at the same time you want a they call it kotai you want a line that is strong, that can survive in various conditions. And especially, you know, you want them to adapt to your lifestyle. Uh, if you are offering them to your friends, your buddies, or if you're selling them locally, you want to be able to say, hey man, these guys, yeah, they're going to be okay in your environment. The only thing that, um, let me take a real quick sip. <clears throat> The best sip of the day is the, how many sips have I had? The seventh sip of the day is the best. It, it's always the best. So, Kampai Jin Jin Chayo. Ah. All right. I forgot what I was talking about, but yeah. You want a strong line. 17 minutes. Let's try to wrap it up in 10, but okay. So, again, um, let's see. Let's drop something. All right, let me wrap some, let me wrap this up in two, or er, er, in a minute. When do midaka st stop growing? It's when the average temperature reaches 50 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 10 degrees Celsius. Winter is coming along, so what my goal is, is to try to get these guys to a certain size. So what size do we need to get them to so they could survive the, the, the chill, so they could chillax during the winter? Again, they don't hibernate, they chillax. Minimum two thirds of an inch, and then ideally three fourths of an inch. There are smaller ones that'll survive, like this little tiny guy I just saw. But I don't know. I mean, from from the Midakas that I have, a lot of them won't make it, right? So I guess that was what I was trying to. talk about today all right so this guy is two-thirds an event uh, two-thirds of an inch right here this guy is three-fourths of an inch if it will focus but doesn't want to focus all right so it's 20 minutes enough of me today thank you very much gracias for uh tuning in to uh, Medaka Metal. Uh, one other thing. Aside from Iron Maiden. So, I think yesterday, uh, I forgot who, Medaka Liar or um, Lair, L-A-I-R, or um, Beery Medaka, he was asking me, like, so what is this thing? So this thing right here is freaking awesome. Okay, let me put this down. It fits pretty perfect in various tubs right here. So what is it? So Daiso, if you have a Daiso next uh, close by, there's various sizes. This is a longer one. This is 
a smaller version. They're all about, so Nihaka and so it's gonna be like $3 USA. And the clip, this is what the clip look like, looks like. This is about $2 as well. All right, there's four in a pack, Daiso. Looks like this. This hole right here fits perfect with this part. And you just clip it on and it just swings. So I just use this to, to just in case there's like rats or like rodents running around. Um, so, you know, the Daiso. Daiso. Yeah. It works, it's great. It doesn't break. It will last forever. That's it for today, 21 minutes and 20 seconds. I was trying to wrap it up in 10 minutes, but I guess not. So we'll do it again next time. Again, check check the temperature. Um, try to see what the forecast is and try to figure out like what your goal, how you want to prepare for the winter, right? For all these little chigos and yogos. All right, so we'll do it again next time. Thank you very much. Gracias. You can find me on Instagram at Medaco Middle. Um, and obviously you can find me here. If you have any questions, just, just put on the comments and then I'll, I'll make, I'll try to make videos based on the questions I get via DM or, um, comments through here or through, um, Instagram. Cool. All right. Do it again next time.